Okay, so welcome to the third tutorial. Uh, in this activity, the first one, we'll be making a whiskey bottle. If you look at a whiskey bottle, we have that curved shape, a bit like the glass bottle that we made in the previous tutorial. But for that one, we wouldn't want to revolve it because if you look at a whiskey bottle, it's actually more of a square profile rather than a, a, um, a circular one. So we can't revolve it. it it ends up looking like a wine bottle instead right so what we'll do first is we'll create a sketch and we'll select the very bottom plane here which is our base so in this case what we'll do is we'll create a rectangle but instead of a two-point rectangle we'll use a center rectangle and we're using a center rectangle so that we can always keep things centered i'm going to give this a 63 millimeter width Hit tab, and I'm going to select uh, 76 as my length. I'll hit enter. And now I'll introduce you to a cool little feature called the fillet, right? We've used 3D model, uh, sorry, 3D body fillets, but we could actually use fillets for 2D sketches as well. Now it's over here, the fillet icon. And if we select the fillet icon, and we select the two edges here, you can see now this is, gives us a curved edge, and we can adjust how curved we want it to be. In this case, I'm going to give it a 7mm fillet, like so. And if I then select the other edges, you can see that it's also going to follow along with that 7mm seven, seven fillet. Now hit enter. And now you can see I've got that nice rounded edge shape while keeping that rectangular feature. Now, if say I want to change my fillet and I want to make it, let's just say 10 I can select this and everything gets uh, adjusted accordingly, right? Now I'm just going to go back. You can stay here if you want, but I'm just going to go back and show you something. So if I have a fillet and I select this edge, I'm just going to make this, let's leave it at 20 for now. If I hit enter and I select fillet again, and now I select this edge, I can create separate fillets, right? With different sizes. So I can make this 10. I can then go again to fillet. And I can make this 5 and whatever. So I can create different fillets by repeating my fillet um, command. In this case, I don't want it to do that. So I'll just go back to the original, which is the 7mm fillet. Okay, so we're back here. I'm going to finish the sketch. And in the last activity, remember how I told you you can place construction planes? In this case, what we want to do is we want to create a construction plane that's offset from this face. Right, we're essentially creating height. And so what we're going to do is select the offset plane. By default, it's this icon. You can always go down to construct and select offset plane. But I'm going to select this sketch plane here. And I'm going to drag it up, right? You can see how it's dragging up. And I'm moving this up by 114 millimeters, okay? So you can see how it's just moved up like so. I'm going to hit OK. And now with this construction plane here, we can actually create a sketch on this plane instead. So we're going to create a sketch here again. You can see you can see this uh, sketch that we did in the background. What we're going to do is we're going to go back to the rectangle tool, select re center rectangle, select the center point, move it out, and we're going to give this a width of 76 by uh, 95. Hit enter. Again, we can also do the fillet. So I'll give this a 12 millimeter fillet. Select the other edges to finish this off. And what we've done basically is made the bottom shape but just a little bit bigger and taller than it was, right? So we'll finish sketch, you see what I mean? We have our bottom surface here, the top, sorry, the bottom sketch and the top sketch. Now we can keep going on, we'll again offset plane, we'll select this one in the middle now, and we'll move this up by 38 millimeters. We'll hit OK. Again, create another sketch on the top. And what we'll do this time is instead of using a rectangular shape, we're just going to do a simple circle because at this stage, we're actually going to make the base of our paw spout. And we'll make this a 40 millimeter diameter circle, right? Hit enter, finish sketch. One more time, we'll hit offset plane, select the circle, move this up by 89 millimeters because we want to make the paw spout tall. Hit okay create a sketch on the top, and we'll make this circle a little bit smaller, right? So I'm going to use the shortcut C for circle. Make this 30, hit enter, finish sketch. And now you can see we have four different sketches all aligned to the center, but 
in a um, sort of staggered uh, location, right? If you almost think of it, it's almost like we're telling it at this point, this will be a circle, this point will be a circle, this will be this shape, and this bottom uh, part will be this shape. And the reason we can do this is because now if we go into create sketch, right, and we select the side plane instead. So instead of the bottom one, we're selecting the side, the blue and red one. We select this. We can connect all these together in the same way that we did with the um, beer bottle. Now, just one thing to take note of. Remember, these images, uh, sorry, these sketches are not in this plane. Remember, they were they were drawn on the X Y plane. This would be the uh, X Z plane or whatever, right? So if we were to try and do that, so let's just go back in the fit point spline, right? Let's just say we can't really snap to anything. I mean, we can snap to this line, but I don't know where it begins and where it ends, right? That might be in, but it might not. If I zoom in, you know, I don't want to keep zooming in forever. So what can I do? How can I tell Fusion I want to find the end of this sketch, right? Because it, let's just say if I drew this here, right, like, like say like this, you can see that it's not actually following my circle, right? See, it's off the circle. I want it to be connected to this very edge here. And you've already seen what I did there. But what I can do is I can hit P, shortcut P for PP, right? And this will be the project tool. If I select my sketch, I'll just hit OK. You can see now, oh look, it's, it's drawn a sketch for me based on the sketch that I made. And what it, what it does is it basically says, okay, from this front view, which is where my sketch is working on, I see a line. So I'm going to draw a line, right? If I were to hide my sketch, so the top one here is this one, you can see it's drawn just a line, but this line is actually going to connect my two um, edges of the circle, right? Because again, this is a, a, a symmetrical circle, it's not an ellipse. So these two points will basically signify the very edges. And so if we do that for the other circle here, like so you can see once I select the circle, it's drawing me a straight line because that's what it looks like from the front view. See, my circle looks like a straight line. So if I hit OK, see I've got my line. And now if I draw my spline, right, and just to make things uh, not so confusing, I'm going to hide these two sketches so you can see. What I can do is I can draw a line like a little curved line like this. Just put one in the middle. And now you can see I can select the edges and these will connect exactly to the edge of my circle. And this is very important, right? So now if I want, I can always go down to the bottom. But again, it's not projecting. Ah, what can I do? Simple. I'm going to hit, es uh, I'm going to hit escape because I don't want these lines for now. I'm going to hide, the, again, my two circles because I want to focus on this plane. If we look from the front, we want this point here, right? And so what we can do is we can select the fit point spline, right? And you can see how it snaps there because we're looking from the front. If we go from the edge, it's not very easy, right? It's a bit hard to snap. You can see there's no snap option. So your view angle is very important for um, placing spline sketches, any, any sketch uh, feature to be honest, right? So we'll make it simple. We'll start from the bottom. See our snap. We'll start with a spline from the bottom. We'll just give this a point here just so it can curve. Uh, doesn't really matter where, just somewhere there. We'll put it on the edge of the second one. We'll move it down. Again, we'll put another curve uh, point, sorry, a point here so it can curve into the pore spout. We'll select that projected edge. And in this case, what we can do is we can just hit enter because what we are going to do now is just connect this with a line, right? That looks fine. We're going to hit tangent so that we can make this spline tangent to this. And now we have sort of the shape of our bottle. You can adjust this to any shape you want. I'm going to make this a little bit more like a whiskey bottle shape. Something like something like that should do, right? Just, just play around with it, do what you want. That's okay because what we are going to do is we're going to select a line. We're going to select the middle point here, right? See how it snaps. Draw it back down to the origin. We'll hit escape. We'll make this a construction line by using the X uh, shortcut. And we are going to mirror 
this um oops we're going to mirror these two lines right if i double click i can select the entire line select my mirror line here hit ok finish catch and now if i were to hide sorry reappear these you can see i've sort of got the shape of my whiskey bottle that i want and now what i can do is use a new feature called the loft tool and you see what happens if i select the bottom plane or the bottom sketch sorry and the second sketch from there you can see how it automatically creates this shape based on the edges now watch what happens if i select from this point here i now go to the third point in the cylinder you can see it draws out that shape right it blows it out because it's trying to conform it right it had it had four edges here in the rectangular shape all combining to a single circular shape and if i select the last one now it's got this shape okay so if we look at this shape it's nothing like what we want it looks horrible right and this is why we drew the sketches on the side and those are what we call guide rails essentially right so in this case we want rails because we are drawing it on the edge so it's not the center line we're going to select the arrow here to select our rails. We're going to select the first one here on the side. You can see how it's already conformed to that shape, but our other side is not um, correctly um, profiled. So we select the other one as well. And just like that, if we hit OK, we have changed that horrible elixir shape into our risky bottle shape. What we're going to do now is we're going to, like our bottle, fill it the bottom by, let's just do five hit OK. And again, fillet is F is the shortcut for fillet. And what we can do is we will actually go and create that um, little cap, right? The, the screw, the thread essentially that will screw on our cap. Because, well, I mean, you could do a cork bottle if you like, but with the beer bottle, a glass bottle, they tend to be um, the little tabs that you sort of push off with the bottle opener. In this case, with a whiskey bottle, you tend to screw on the cap. So you need a little protrusion to sort of um, place the threads on. In this case, very simply, what we can do is select the face here, create a sketch, and we'll just offset this edge here, right? And how do we do that? Well, we can use our projections again. So if we select P, project, and select the edge of our model, hit OK. You can see now we have a projection. We can then select offset, and I'll zoom in a bit. Hit, uh, select the edge, and we can pull it in, and we're going to give this a offset of, I don't know, about uh, minus 2. Maybe more, minus 3. Let's do minus 3. We'll do OK. And now we have that little uh, offset uh, circle. If we finish the sketch, select the smaller circle, press E for extrude, and we pull this up by 12. We'll hit join for now. Now you can see we've got the start of that little um, protrude, protruding edge that we can then put our threads on. Uh, in this case, what we'll do first is we'll just uh, fillet the edge here. So this small little edge, we don't want it to be sharp. We'll give it a 2 millimeter fillet. Hit OK. And we'll make this bottle hollow, right? So again, we can use the shell command. Remember, it's not got tangent chain selected, so we can do this. We can select the top face. And we'll give this a 3mm thickness, if it can. Yeah, 3mm should be fine. Hit OK. If you want to double check, again, we can always use section analysis. You can see here that our bottle is, in fact, hollow. Right? Great. So now we want to create threads here. Now, how do we do that? Well, very simply, there's a tool for it. It's called Thread. Yeah. Shocker, I know. So with the Thread tool, what we can do is we can select the faces that we want to be threaded. In this case, it would be this cylindrical face. So we'll click on the outer edge here. And now you'll notice there's like a little thread thing. But let's just hit OK for now. Cool, we have threads. But do we? Well, if you look from the front, it looks like we have threads, but it's just flat. Why is it flat? Shouldn't there be like protrusions? Well, that's because in our thread here, we don't have it model. Now watch what happens when I select model here, right? Just watch. If I hit model, you can see now it takes on that 3D shape, right? You can see that shape. So when you're not um, when you're not using this for like 
to actually print or manufacture, you can leave it like this, and this will give you the image of a threaded um, end, which you can use for rendering and whatever. But if you actually do need to print it and have it functional, then you need to select model. So make sure you select that. Okay. For now, we'll leave it at full length. We'll, we'll do more about uh, about threads in a different tutorial, um, like in the light bulb one, I believe. But for now, we'll leave it like this. We can play around with the settings as well. I'm not going to bother too much. So I'll hit OK. Now I've got my whiskey bottle with that threaded edge. And just like that, I have the whiskey bottle done. Now, if you want, you can always make a cap. That's fairly simple. I'll just show you how. Again, I can create a sketch on this face here, the bottom face, right? And the reason I'm doing that is because I can create a circle. And I'll just blow this out to about 35 millimeters, right? I want my cap to be a little bit, little bit bigger so that I can have my thread go into it. Okay, I'll finish the sketch. I'll hit extrude and I'll select the entire circular face. Now, if I can't select it because the body's in the way, that's easy. I can hide the body. Select that like so, right? And now if I pull up, it's going to cut it. I don't want it to cut it. I want it to create a new body instead, right? So you see how that I've got my new body. So I'll just make this 20, okay? In the front, you can see 20, my thread. So I'll hit OK. And before I do anything, I'm just going to make this look nicer. So again, I'll fillet this. I'll give this a fillet of five, no, maybe three should be enough. Uh, I'll hit plus so I can give this bottom edge as well a fillet. I'll give this maybe two. Yeah, so that looks okay as a cap. I'll hit okay. Now again, remember I only have um, a cylindrical body. This is not going to fit into this screw because it is solid. See, it's just a puck basically. So what I can do is I can actually use the combine tool, right? And the combine tool essentially takes two objects and merges them together or cuts them from each other. Okay, and I'll demonstrate it now. So if I go into combine, which you can find here, combine, now the target body is the body that you want to either cut into or combine into, okay? So in this case, I want to cut the whiskey bottle away from my cap. So my cap is going to be the target body and my whiskey bottle is going to be the tool body that cuts away from it, okay? So in this case, you can see I have different operations. We'll go through this again in more detail. I'm just going to select cut this time. And I'm going to select keep tools so, cause, so I can keep my whiskey bottle. I'm going to hit OK. And if now I hide my whiskey bottle, you can see I've got my thread. But it's got that shell, remember? So if we look at it with the whiskey bottle and we do a section analysis, you can see that my cap looks like this. Because remember, it was hollow, so it didn't cut into this part, right? Oops. So it looks a bit like that. That's fine. You're just going to cancel. We'll hide the whiskey bottle. Select this profile. Press extrude. We'll push it back in a little bit. And we'll just zoom in and select the very bottom face of the other end, essentially. And select cut. Hit OK. And now you can see we have our cap cut, like so. And if we were to go and screw it in, and we can check with section analysis, you can see here, this now should be able to screw in our threads, right? You can see the hard edges around this edge. But, you know, let's just say we're going to hide this. Let's just say our, you know, thread is it's exactly, so there's no tolerance for it, essentially. We can then go to offset face. We'll select the edges of our thread, and we'll just push this back by just a little bit, right? We, we, we'll have like a 0 0.2 millimeter tolerance. We'll hit OK. And don't worry too much about what offset face does. It basically just pushes the shape away. Again, I go through this in the light bulb tutorial. But now if we show our cap again and we section analysis one last time, you can see that now there is a gap, right? There's a gap in the middle and so it should hopefully make things a little bit easier to slip onto. There should be less binding. Now the sides still aren't um, offset. That's fine, you can always go in there and offset the faces here, these side faces if you want. I don't recommend it, I think it's easier to just scale it up uh, smaller. I can just go to my bottle cap, I can select scale, I'll select here. 
I'll select a point somewhere, maybe in the middle. I don't know. Nope, I can't select the point. Uh, doesn't matter. I'll just scale up a little bit, maybe 0 0.1. So I'll scale up by 10%. And then now this should have some gap, you know? Uh, I mean, do whatever you want, it's fine. In this case, we're not actually going to print it, so it doesn't need to be perfect. I can now go to my appearance. Again, I can bring to red, right? And I wonder if they have a wax, so let's try wax. Yeah, they do, they have a red wax. I'm going to give this to the top, a bit like a maker's... Uh, whatever it was called, I forget the, the whiskey name. Um, Canadian Club, was it? No. It was one of them, Is one of the expensive ones. <laughs> You smell that? That is the smell of my dick not working tonight or any night. Anyway, I'll go to glass and I'll go to bronze. Select that, bring it here. I'll close my appearance. And now, just like that, we have our whiskey bottle using a loft command instead of an extrude or revolve or sweep tool, right? The loft essentially takes the outer circumference of the circle or any shape really right it could be any irregular shape it takes the perimeter of that shape combines it to the next shape and creates a 3d body from that right it put it's sort of it's an interpolation almost i don't know if i use that word right but i mean you saw it you know what i mean tutorial over if it ain't 12 years or older i don't want it wait that's